We're here with social media author Eric Qualman. Your new book's called What Happens in Vegas Stays on YouTube. And when it comes to students using social, what type of trends are you seeing? You know, I never got the question three years ago when I asked them, hey, aren't you concerned about your privacy? And not one was concerned. And now the top question I get from students is, how can I make it more private? And instead of what I tell them is, don't shrink. Like some people say, I'm just not going to be on these tools. No, you need it to produce. That's you want to produce your best digital identity out there today. And then, but also you need to understand the rules of protection. So that's what we talk about in the Vegas book. What happens in Vegas stays on YouTube. 36 rules to not only produce but also protect what you produce. And what are some of the ways they can protect and produce at the same time? Yeah. The best way is to, uh, the one rule of thumb is if you have to think more than three seconds if it's a good idea or not, it's not. So don't post it. The other thing to remember is that what happens offline stays online. So it's one and the same. Your integrity and your reputation are now one. They used to be different. Your reputation is what the public perceived you to be, and your integrity is what you stood for behind closed doors. Those are now one thing. And then another tip that's very tactical, post it forward. You've heard of pay it forward? Post it forward. You need to network before you need your network. Now, how do you do that? First of all, get on LinkedIn. If your profile is not at 100% completion, make sure it's at 100% completion. Why? You get 40 times more job opportunities if you do that. That's the second thing to use LinkedIn for. Start endorsing people that you respect, that you might want to work for. That'll get you on their radar. Third, look at people that went to your college or university and reach out to them and say, hey, I want to know how you became so successful because I went to the same school you did and I want to follow a similar path. And so now you're networking before you actually need that network. And do you see this trend toward privacy? Is that what explains the rise of Snapchat and other things like it? So privacy's dead, genie's out of the bottle. You'll see a lot of legislators in Washington try to put it back in the bottle, but just understand that whatever you, if you're using Snapchat or putting in privacy um, items in Facebook, which I encourage you all to do, still understand whatever you do, you gotta understand that someone's probably gonna see that at some point in time. If Target, the NSA, FBI can be hacked, so can you. So just the key is at the core, you don't have to be perfect. I talk about being flawsome, it's through our flaws that you can show how awesome you are. It's when you make a mistake, it's not the crime but the cover up some of the time. So when you make a mistake, own it, publicly own it, and try to fix it. And that'll show a lot about your character and actually it helps you in business as well when you do that. A lot of people have actually had success like FedEx. When they have a mistake and they fix it, they get three times more clients than they have before. And one of the themes that you've talked about in other books that you continue in this book is about being positive on social. Um, why do you? Why are you such a strong believer in that? Complain equals digital pain. If you want to stand out from the others, the average person complains 15 to 30 times per day. So let's say you reduce that just down to where you complain just three times a day. That's going to separate you from the rest. And also understand there's no context when it comes to digital. So when you're sarcastic, when you're complaining, that's there forever. And there's no context behind why you're doing that. And so if all of your digital footprint is all about complaints, if I'm trying to hire someone, I don't want a complainer on my team. So I'm going to move on to the next candidate. And how often do, you know, we tell them all the time to watch what they're posting online because candidates are looking. That's not just a myth, right? It's not a myth at all. I mean, the first thing I'm going to do is the candidates coming into my office, so I'm going to review them before I even talk to them. So I'll understand that I've already reviewed you digitally. And then once you get into my office, I'm going to say, don't tell me what you did. Here's my iPhone. Here's my tablet. Here's my Samsung. Show me right now. What are you doing out there today? You know, how, where's your blog? What did you do for another company during your internship? And what was the impact of that? I want to see it. Don't tell me about it. I want to see what you did.